Hey guys, welcome. This is your June 2024 monthly Love Tarot Energy update. It's a reading for the collective of all signs. We're going to start with um, a card from Higher Self Oracle. Then I'm going to give you the astrology for the month of June, some key dates that you might want to write down. Um, and then I'll do a tarot spread. It's time stamped for your convenience. And as always, there will be an extended where I'll do mini spreads for each sign, just so you know. Um, and if you already have a membership, any of the individual Zodiac sign memberships or the all access pass, you already have access to this extended because you get that collection as part of your membership along with the new moon and the full moon. Um, as well, you do need to go into your account at moments.com to access it. Okay, so I'm pulling from higher self. I'll get the card and I'm going to read it to you out of the guidebook because the messages are lovely. <laughs> Ask for guidance. Okay, here we go. It says, do you need clarity about a situation? Have you been confused or feel limited about choices in your life? Have you been presented with various options and feel uncertain which choice to make? How Gemini, right? We're in Gemini season. This card urges you to directly ask for divine guidance, either from your higher self or your spiritual team, rather than absorb yourself in a cycle of uncertainty and confusion. If you have been asking for guidance, then your higher self wants you to remember that it communicates to you either via intuitive nudges or through symbolic messages. The messages may come in the form of animals or numbers or through another medium. Familiarize yourself with the ways your higher self communicates and decode the symbols to understand the message provided. The universe has provided you with many helpers who eagerly await your request for guidance. You have available unto you guardian angels, ancestors, archangels, spirit guides, and hosts of other beings who patiently wait to help you. These beings can help you in every area of your life. They can also help you with material things and abundance as well as building confidence, faith, and patience. This is a reminder that you are not alone and that help is all around you. Just ask. I love that message. Yes. Your, your angels, ancestors, passed on loved ones. Yeah. The ascended masters, the gods and goddesses that watch over you and protect you always to serve your highest good. You got to ask and then see the signs and synchronicities and symbols as a form of a response. How lovely is that? Okay, so now I'm going to walk you through the month of June. It's got some real lovely energy. It's all about now a stellium in the sign of Gemini because we're in Gemini season. Stellium, for those of you who are, are new or haven't heard me say it before, is when three or more planets um, are in one sign or a house. So in this case, we're talking about the sign of Gemini. The sun is already there. Venus, Jupiter just moved in there. Venus is there. So we already have that energy building up. Um, and Mercury will follow suit um, on June 3rd. So then we'll have four, well, three plus the sun. So all of, in the month of June, all of the personal planets will change signs. And even though that's usually um, a little jarring because we are so affected by the personal planets, in the month of June, they're moving into signs where they're really comfortable. So it should be definitely easier and gentler than the past few months have been. Um, Mercury returns to his home turf of Gemini on June 3rd. There are no retrogrades in sight. We're in the free and clear for a couple months. So communication gets clear, more precise when Mercury is in one of his two ruling signs. The other sign is Virgo. Um, there's also, uh, the moon and the sun, um, are going to be together on June 6th for the new moon in Gemini. Venus will also be right there. Stick a pin in that because I want to talk about Venus and the sun in a second. 
Um, so Venus will be exactly conjunct the moon and the sun on June 6th, and that allows us to set intentions for ideas and the desire to share the journey with someone special or others and new opportunities for love and connections in intimacy. So really yummy. Um, then we have Mars moving into one of Venus's signs, which is Taurus on the 8th. Uh, so we're going to move a little slower, be a little less impulsive, make decisions in a more grounded and heart centered way. I really love that energy. Um, Mars is kind of been, you know, when Mars is in Aries, which is the sign that he rules, you would think it'd be great, but it can be a lot for some of us. So having Mars kind of slow his roll in Taurus, um, just perfect timing for the lazy, hazy days of summer, feels like just what the doctor ordered. Um, and then on June 16th, Mercury and Venus will meet up they'll be in a conjunction at the last degree of Gemini, and that is called the anoretic degree. Um, and it's, it's sort of a mastery degree uh, where we kind of wrap things up. So Mercury, head, Venus, heart, beautiful alignment, and then they move hand in hand together into Cancer, which is the mansion of self-care. So doesn't that sound really nice? Um, especially after all the roller coaster we've been riding for so long. On June 20th is the summer solstice, longest day and most light available in the Northern Hemisphere, shortest day, less light available in the Southern Hemisphere. So here in the Northern Hemisphere, we will be celebrating expansiveness um, of summer and down under we'll be finding the light within. We have the full moon in Capricorn taking place right after solstice on the 21st. So full moon, the sun and the moon are opposite. And the full moon in Capricorn means that it's ruled by Saturn. So we have themes around goals, projects, responsibilities. And that opposition basically with the sun in Cancer says give yourself some grace for things that have gotten stuck or derailed, right? It's, it's, it's a good full moon to kind of release all the ways you've gotten in your own way so that you can kind of reset your goals and it asks you to be gentle with yourself in that process. So I really love that full moon. Um, now on the 29th, as we close out the month, Black Moon Lilith, who is like a mascot of shadow work, uh, she changes signs, leaving Virgo behind, moving into Libra. And that takes her about nine months to get through a sign. So for nine months, the shadow work, guys, is going to be on relationships. Uh, your work with mirror consciousness, um, where we find ourselves triggered by the outside world. We turn within for the solution. We ask for guidance. Perfect how that all comes together. Okay, so that's technically the month. And I said stick a pin in the Venus sun thing. We have, and I'm going to read it so I don't mess it up. There is this five-day period from June 3rd to June 7th. Notice that the, the new moon is kind of housed in there on the 6th. But for five days, June 3rd through the 7th, where Venus um, and the sun are conjunct. And that is called Venus Kazemi, Kazemi meaning in the heart of the sun. Such beautiful language, that's an Arabic term. Um, and they hang out this time for five days. So it's a full five days of allowing more love into our consciousness, into our uh, conscious awareness, um, it's a very um, sensitive in terms of more compassion, sensitivity, empathy. It's just really beautiful energy. Uh, and because Mercury is right there in the mix, coming up right behind on the 8th, it feels to me like it's a perfect time for a private reading special offer. So we have Venus Kazemi special offer. There is a link below if you are interested in a private reading. Um, I think I say it's $75 off my regular reading rate, which is a pretty good savings. I'm only opening six spots, okay? Six spots to correspond with the sixth 
card, Master Arcana, which is the lover's card, okay, which is Gemini. So six spots, um, grab your spot, and uh, I'll be getting to those pretty quickly so that we get it timed right with that um, transit. I uh, won't get them all done by the 7th, but I'll, I'll get on them pretty quickly. So take a look at that. And that is my way of saying I want to support some of you who, um, you know, really need the break, um, but really want an opportunity to get a handle on your twin flame soulmate in relationship, connection. So go grab your spot now. I am not going to advertise it on other um, readings. So first come, first serve. Let's jump into tarot, shall we? Okay, so I'm going to, like I said, go week by week, pull the overall energy for the month, and we'll clarify a few things as needed. Overall energy, king of pentacles. Talking about some reliability, stability, uh, responsibility, someone showing up, dedicated, focused. Wow, yes. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Amazing. Okay. So I'll walk you through my general impressions. Oh, beautiful. Okay. As I said, a focus here on something really grounded. This is Taurus, right? So Mars moving into Taurus. Feels like actions will be um, dependable, practical, reliable, predictable. Good energy there. Your person in this top row coming into week one with a focus on the connection. Um, week two, maybe something that they kind of need to take um, a broader view of the hanged man can be just about a surrender of some sort as well. So we'll keep that in mind. In week three, overcoming obstacles. Um, I like this because it feels like in week three is when we uh, move into cancer season, right? So it feels to me like that uh, this is where we get a helping hand, a leg up. The two of you, like this person being more supportive um, but also gathering up their strength, courage, and confidence to overcome any obstacles because in the fourth week, lots of stuff to process on an emotional level as we move into the following month of July. Now for you, week one, patience is a key word here, setting those seeds of intentions, planting them deep. This first week of June is a new moon week. So you can start thinking about your intentions now. Obviously, we wait till the new moon has hit its peak. And then we set the plant those seeds nice and deep. So um, be thinking about that. And then we, you know, we kind of have to give it time to um, take root and grow organically. Second week, we're looking at the abundance that I was talking about, the future planning, um, Ten of Pentacles feels like that moment where you're really focused on the intentions that you have set for the long haul, okay, uh, of this connection, because that's what I'm reading about. Week three, a little bit of a nail biter, but don't worry because, right, there's an energy of sort of helping each other deal with it, and it just seems to me like there might be something that gets you really nervous or anxious, maybe a little agitated, worried, um, but I'm going to tell you, try not to sweat it because it will slowly resolve. This is an offer that comes in nice and slow and methodically, probably, um, an offer coming from somebody that is now aware of what they have to offer. Maybe they didn't feel that way before. Notice how we're dealing with some confusion, maybe a little overwhelm. Now for the connection, um, like I said, open, warm, empathic, sensitive. This is a, um, a beautiful card because it's Cancerian energy. And so I almost feel like this whole month, this first week sets the tone where we wanna have compassion, um, an open heart, and she's the empath of the tarot, so keep that in mind. Week two, hmm, 
um, feels like there may be a little bit of a need to sort of revisit that sense, those questions around self-worth and value. And it does feel to me like that's maybe coming more from your person as they're evaluating something. And then, you know, they kind of have to overcome um, some obstacles and there might be a million different options to process, but they want to be, they want to um, have something to show for it, right? They don't want to come to you empty handed. I know that sounds funny. It's not like they're, you know, company coming over, but the Knight of Pentacles makes a solid tangible offer. And it feels to me like whoever this is has to come upon an awareness of their worth or value, that they have something to offer and that you feel valued by them. Week three is perfect. Offloading any negative karma, unburdening yourselves. This is the connection I'm referencing and a nice, beautiful energy, uh, conciliatory meeting in the middle, kind of forging peace if necessary, reconciliations for any anything that's gone a little sideways before, but it feels really lovely. Um, you'll get there slowly. Just wanted to say that because, you know, Mars into Taurus moves slow. Okay, so let's jump in, get some clarifiers. King of Pentacles. What's our king? <laughs> yeah. King and the Knight of Pentacles. King of Cups, Two of Wands. I feel like your person here, this is the theme. I feel like we now have the, the King and the Queen of Cups. And this is really important because that talks about this person's offer, their tangible offer is the truth of how they feel, is showing up, is kind of being a rock. It's a path that they're choosing. Oh. That's so nice. So let's look at the Four of Wands to the Hanged Man, week one to week two. Page of Swords, Four of Wands again, Six of Wands. Yeah, I, I feel like this person, it's like a triumphant homecoming. Um, it's definitely coming through as a little bit more uh, surrender, something they have been evaluating, trying to do their due diligence ferreting out the information before they, you know, take this powerful step. The Six of Wands is an action card. So it feels like, what do I desire? They're in this phase of choosing right now. They're choosing their path and the path leads back to you or leads to this connection um, that they're surrendering to. And I mean that in a lovely way, not in uh, like a, I give up, like it's not that kind of surrender. It's like you are who they love. This is it. Um, their heart is with you. And they, you know, it's so it's like if they've been fighting it or resisting it in any way heretofore, um, that kind of dissipates. Let's look at the strength card to the seven of wands. Week three to week, seven of cups, I'm sorry. Week three to week four. Right. Oh, my goodness. Um, I feel like what this person is going to need some help from you on is um, overcoming their, the, their own tendency to avoid dealing with things directly um, on an emotional level because they kind of get in the weeds so this is them overcoming that tendency to cut and run, that tendency to avoid situations that are emotionally um, or, or that are more emotionally demanding. Got it? Because the theme is that they stick around. They stick it out. They're there to stay, come hell or high water. Uh, they want to they wanna make a solid offer. They're coming from maybe a deep reservoir of emotions that they haven't shared up till now. And so it gets overwhelming and their tendency is to cut and run or avoid or deny. Um, but I'm seeing this beautiful energy that feels like um, some form of coming together and finding the joy in it, uh, which can be very healing. So if there has been um, any kind of 
experience that you've had with uh, a lack of honesty or forthrightness, um, I do feel the focus is on healing that, and that's part of the of overcoming um, with that strength card. You know, getting their game face on to deal with it more directly, um, to bring some healing to that situation. And there are a million different ways they can do that Seven of Cups. So it's about, you know, it's, a, it's an emotional juggling act for this person. So when we get to that point, you're going to kind of be uh, biting your fingernails. And what you really could do is reframe that so that you can send supportive energy instead of, sitting in worry which is a, a far lower vibration you can kind of send encouragement right because they're the one that's got to process all of this they're the ones coming in with the offer they're the ones making this triumphant return um right and offering you this olive branch or this yeah this this is where i think we can agree on x y or z and it brings you closer together so I'm seeing that week three to four as a little bit more of a struggle for them, but you can be supportive. So now let's see for you, we have, um, I would rather look at the, I already understand the seven to the 10. Let's go 10 to the um, nine of swords. Week two to week three, high priestess, five of cups. That's where your worry's coming from. Um, recollections of, of things not going great in the past um, you're really going to have to rely on your intuition this may be a perfect time where you ask for guidance so i'm i'm sort of feeling that high priestess as your connection to the divine to your guides to your spiritual team because you're going to be focused on the future and very worried that this is where this person could say i'm getting off this ride so um mm, Try not to spend too much time uh, obsessing about the past. You're not going back there. This is about reunion, second chances, redemption, forgiveness, reconciliation, if that's required. So again, I'm, I'm beseeching those of you who are watching, who identify with what I'm speaking to, that you use the beautiful energy of Venus Kazemi, right? Venus in the heart of the sun, to have some compassion and grace for yourself, to um, not fall prey to um, worry about things from the past, uh, like reappearing, you don't have control over it anyway, and really flip the script on yourself so that you're tapped into um, a higher mindset of support and guidance to usher the two of you forward. That's what I see. I'm going to pull an extra card for the Knight of Pentacles. Yep. Right? Because you're just going to waste, you're going to spin yourself silly. And <laughs> you're just going to waste precious time where you could be focused on the beautiful energy that's coming toward you emotional completion bliss nirvana the happily ever after of it all is what's coming toward you so put your energy will be better spent sending your person positive vibes <laughs> encouragement compassion sensitivity the i know you can do this right instead of worrying about how many different ways things can go wrong so now for the connection, let's look at the Queen of Cups to the Five of Pentacles. Um, still fears of duplicity or fears of defeat um, rise up. Am I going to be left, you know, both of you, this is for the connection. This is both of you worried about some similar energies of all you know i can't have nice things things don't go right for me um i have nothing to offer or this person doesn't see my worth and value and so there's a lot of you know triggered energy that rises up and this first week is the new moon week so remember you want to set some intentions here with this seven of pentacles for what's going to unfold over time and um, it'll be important that you acknowledge your fears, but get your head and your heart right. So that when you set these intentions, um, you believe yourself worthy. 
I love this for you. So let's look at the five of pentacles to the 10 of wands. So week one to week two for the connection, it's like there are some lingering doubts, fears, um, concerns. And then week two to week three, Manifesting some freaking relief. The Four of Pentacles here holding on to what you value. Sometimes the Four of Pentacles can be guarded energy. And so that's very possible since week two to week three for you is going to be dicey. For this person, it's week three to week four. So you're still a little bit ahead of them um, energetically. So what I'm trying to ascertain here is what's the general message like, how do you get through it? Well, you focus on your intentions that you've set. You understand that you have all the elements working in your favor. You know, that magician is your mastery. And that could be when, in fact, um, uh, Venus and Mercury... Wait. Yeah, Mercury and Venus move together from that last degree of um, Gemini into Cancer. So it's almost like that sense of mastery that we can get beyond it. We can offload the negative heavy karma. Um, I do feel like that Ten of Swords is referencing something from the past because it's kind of showing up as a challenging energy that you may be fearful will come back around. And since we have the moon here, um, I am looking at those of you who have had um, some situations where you felt abandoned or ghosted or, you know, dropped like a lead balloon. And you, there's some fears around that. Like, I don't think you're living through it now, but I think it comes back around energetically and there are fears and worries and concerns about it. So what you want to do is manifest the relief of offloading it instead of staying in the negative lower vibration. So now let's see um, the 10 uh, to the six, week three to week four. Aha, the hanged man, the lovers, king of pentacles. So we end where we began, they show up, all this worry that you're going to take, you know, that, that the relationship's going to fall apart, um, that it's over. No, that's not what I'm seeing here. This is about, again, your person in week one to week two is in a process of surrendering to the power of this connection, their desire for it, um, how to approach you. Um, and so there's got to be some surrender to the letting go of, of what's gone down in the past um, you know, because I am seeing some reference to some things that could have been very problematic, hurtful, devastating, but we have the beautiful lover's card, which, um, is Gemini. And it just feels so powerful to see the king of pentacles come back because it's almost like their return provides the anchoring for the connection. So you can offload all the negative karma, unburden yourselves and move forward into July with a lot of comfortable energy, um, a little more focused on the joy that you bring each other. So I think June is a beautiful month. Um, I'm just gonna call it that way. So as you know, I uh, there's a link to the extended for those of you that just want the one time, it says one time. Grab that one for those of you in memberships, you gotta go to moments.com for, for access to your extended. Um, I'll go all around the Zodiac, small little readings so that you get a deeper dive for each of your individual signs. Good for sun, moon, rising, Venus. If you have enjoyed this reading or it's been helpful or illuminating in any way, I do ask that you subscribe to my channel. Um, you can like and share if you feel called to do so, but by all means, subscribe. Here we go with some astrology for you. King of Pentacles is Taurus. Knight of Pentacles, um and that's out twice, is Virgo. King of Cups is associated with Scorpio. Page of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Um, Hanged Man is here twice. That's Neptune, which rules Pisces. The Strength card is Leo. We have High Priestess is um, 
the moon actually, but I associate her with Pisces. Judgment is Pluto, which rules Scorpio. We have the Queen of Cups, as I said, is Cancerian energy. The moon is Pisces. Um, Nine of Pentacles is Virgo, as is um, the Magician is actually Mercury, which rules Virgo and Gemini. And then we have the Lovers is Gemini. And as I said, we close out again with our beautiful um, King of Pentacles, Taurus energy. So that's what I have for you. Lovely reading. I'm headed to the extended now. I'll see you there in a second. Have a beautiful June.